Erev Tov, Chavri, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And of course, as we're looking first here at North Korea once again, uh, and ABC News has been reporting about how that the uh, United States is preparing, uh, in its own words there, to defend its allies there in the region. And uh, the USS Ronald Reagan, the nuclear aircraft carrier that is out actually there, uh, near North Korea. In fact, actually it's been docked here today in Seoul, South Korea. Very concerning to me that it would actually dock a particular Seoul. Uh, that kind of gives a <laughs> uh, one way for South, uh, North Korea to actually strike and, and get more of a direct hit, uh, you might say an easy target. And the mere fact that North Korea does not strike uh, kind of lets us know that North Korea is really not wanting to engage the U.S. in any kind of conflict there, although that the U.S. has continued to do the military drills, that just recently conducting five days of military drills, and uh, ABC News, some of their correspondents were actually there in the region uh, to see firsthand just how big a, uh, and how sizable of a force that the U.S. and the coalition there have in the region to be able to uh, counter the situation with North Korea. Now, again, North Korea is armed with nuclear weapons, weapons, uh, so is the United States and uh, many other nations around the world there. But uh, North Korea is vowed it will not give up its nuclear weapons. It is willing to negotiate, it seems to be, but not when it comes to the issue of uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, so you can't quite figure out exactly which way this is going to go, but it is kind of interesting to kind of see how the things actually unfold uh, as we go along here. Uh, former President Jimmy Carter, in fact, he's probably the oldest former president that we have is at this point right now, has offered to go to North Korea. In fact, today, all of the former presidents of the United States that are still living, including Jimmy Carter, uh, George H.W. Bush, George Bush uh, Jr., as well as Bill Clinton and that of Barack Obama, all five of these former presidents there in Texas uh, doing a appreciation rally there for the volunteers uh, that have come together to help the Texans after the wake of Hurricane Harvey. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see something like that take place regardless of your political views. Uh, I think it's kind of inter interesting to see all these presidents come together uh, for the sake of those that are in need there. Uh, also, the, the, uh, j the issue of being brought up with Puerto Rico was also brought up by President Bill Clinton. I thought that was a uh, something that, that needed to be said, and as he said, regardless of uh, race, color, religion, or political affiliation, we need to come together and do something to help the people of Puerto Rico. I uh, couldn't agree more. Uh, turning into other news here, Russia, U.S. diplomat dispute could endanger Syria investigation. This is according to uh, OrientNews.net. Uh, That's a Kurdish news uh, agency there that uh, is bringing out the fact that uh, the U.N., group there is trying to bring charges against the Syrian government for using sarin gas on its own population. Uh, once again, this is uh, stemming back from April, what happened there. And of course, those of you that have really followed this closely, notice that uh, one, Russia has never been in agreement with the way the investigation is done because no Russian observers were allowed to be a part of the investigation. Uh, neither Syrian, the Syrian government, it's all been done in a hush-hush way and uh, very secretively and not uh, with the disclosure that should be done. And once again, as so many have brought out about this situation there, as you can see on your screen right here, these are supposed to be victims of the sarin gas, and yet the man with the water hose out here walking around barefooted uh, amongst the sarin gas victims. One drop of sarin gas is lethal to uh, a grown adult. So the question still remains, especially under the uh, white helmets and all the propaganda uh, videos that they have put out about this sarin gas attack, and in, in many cases already showing that they were handling the victims of the sarin gas with their bare hands and washing them off when they should have died as well, but they didn't. So there's been a lot of um, a lot of been a, a lot of people come out and say uh, journalists and experts alike, including those in the field that would know better. Uh, that this clearly was a staged event from the beginning and that it has never was a sarin gas attack by the uh, President Bashar al-Assad for the Syrian government. Um, another issue coming up uh, came out today, 15 extreme, extreme Jewish nationalists detained for campaign to stop Israeli Arab dating. Of course, Mr. Goldstein 
as you can see pictured here on your uh, far left here the screen here don't know if you guys see him on there he's also the man that was arrested for uh, speaking out publicly about uh, getting rid of all the idols uh, that are inside of Israel he's referring more so to the uh, the churches that are in there and the idols that they have where people kneel and pray to and things like that uh, but they have now been arrested for the incitement of supposedly attacking Arab youth that have been dating uh, Jewish girls to try to deter them from doing so. Uh, I do know that there has been cases before where Jewish girls that do marry Arab young men end up going in behind into the Palestinian area never to be seen by their families again because of the uh, strict rules of the Arabic world there. So I know that there is some concern on that side there, but it's certainly uh, the condoning of going and beating people is certainly not the way to handle that. Um, you know, maybe education and things of that. But there is a, uh, there is a lot of discrimination uh, back and forth, both sides against one another. And of course, their views are, are so opposite into the spectrum, the Jewish view from the Arabic view, uh, you know, it, it just really creates a tremendous, uh, very, very tough situation. I remember Mr. Goldstein, though, uh, Gobstein, excuse me, when Mr. Gobstein, when he actually was arrested over the issue of the church burning there, his own attorney uh, actually asked, because his arrest was pushed by the Vatican itself, and his own attorney asked whether or not the Pope himself would come preside, preside over his trial. Uh, I thought that was very, very interesting that the attorney brought this up. And of course, just because the fact he uh, voiced his opinion uh, was no reason for him to be arrested. And of course, the Vatican was calling for his group to be banned altogether. So we can still see that they're definitely out to try to put a stop to him and the group that he has there inside of Israel. Uh, moving on, uh, one last thing as well on this subject here. This course is back from 2013. October 17th, Jewish women can't volunteer at night to avoid contact with Arabs. This was something that uh, Naftali Bennett was uh, given the blessings to there to stop the young Jewish women from being working at the hospitals at night because of the relationships were being developed between these young Jewish women and Arab doctors. Um, so it's, this has been an ongoing situation even before 2013. You can find a lot of other articles as well. Uh, there's always been a problem between uh, both the Jewish and Arab communities and them not wanting one another to date one another, at least the Jewish community especially. But this also goes on the Arabic side as well, because we know that there are, as they call them, honor killings for uh, Arabic women that marry outside of their own faith. Uh, so it is it's certainly a very difficult situation either way you go. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Be sure to check out Danoon Institute. We're going to be going into uh, a, a very fascinating biblical insight. We will be sharing here on Israeli News Live as well. Probably share it tomorrow morning uh, because I just want you to be able to see this. Looking at prophecy in the news, a prophecy that I saw in the story of David uh, that is, has a lot to do with what is happening with Hebron, and, of course, the tomb of the patriarchs, Abraham, Sarah, uh, the burial place there of Jacob and Leah, uh, as well as probably by the Jewish community as Adam and Eve were also buried at the same site. You are going to want to see this. Uh, very interesting insight as well as the type of Yeshua with that of the great King David. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.